This is Frank Geary. He is a world famous architect who has designed beautiful buildings all around the world. Like all successful designers, he starts off with a sketch. And as you can see in the example here, his style of sketching is messy, rough and done very quickly. Some people might think it's a bit of a scribble. But in his initial sketches, he communicates the first glimpse of an idea that's in his head. And when you look at his final designs, like the Guggenheim Museum in Spain, you can see the spark that the initial idea communicates, the amazing abstract nature, the use of light and shadow, and how all the different parts work together to create the overall design. In this task, you're going to be asked to design a wall clock in the style of Frank Gehry, and it's going to have to be as creative as you can make it. When you're sketching, what we'll be practicing is trying to make your sketching rough so it's not neat, fast so it's quite quick and as creative as possible so your ideas are interesting and different from each other. And we're going to be using a technique called taking your pencil for a walk. This technique is something that you probably have done when you're much younger. Just drawing a line and seeing where it goes not lifting your pencil from the paper and trying to connect it at the end. You'll see what I've done here in the paper is I've just done some squiggles. I've just seen where the pencil takes me or the pen takes me. Um, I'm just drawing a line, making sure it crosses over itself at some point and joins back up at the end. And the shapes that I'm doing, I'm really trying to make some differences between them. So in this one here, I've drawn some squiggles and then I've contrasted that with some straight lines. Sometimes I'll think like this one, I'll make it longer than the others. And maybe at one side, it's got some interesting bit. This one here, when I drew it, I looked at it and thought, oh, that looks quite like um, a flame, the shapes that I had managed to create there. So really just see where it goes, fill your page up, work as quickly as possible. It should only take you a few minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll start picking out the shapes and um, turning them into the ideas of a wall clock. Once you've got your page filled up with ideas, then we're going to start outlining some different shapes that we can see within these. Um, to do that, you can either use the pen that you've got and just go around your shapes and start creating a thicker line um, as you're sort of pulling out the different components that the clock is going to be made up from. Or you can do what I've done here and I've switched to a nice thick Sharpie pen or a felt tip pen. And it's much faster as I can just very quickly outline some shapes. Now how you do this, just look at one of the um, squiggles that you've, one of the designs that you've done and just break it into some component parts. As I'm going to um, do this, I've got to make sure that I've got some paper behind um, or the Sharpie pen will bleed through onto the table. You'll see in that example that I've just done, I've outlined three kind of pieces of the shape. And sometimes when I do it, I might want to just, uh, like this one here, this kind of fin that's sticking up, I might just want to add a little line in to create a sort of uh, distinction between the different parts that the clock's going to be made from. Sometimes you will go over the lines exactly as they are and sometimes you'll ignore some of the lines and pretend that they're not there. Imagine that when you're doing this, you've got pieces of material that you're wanting to assign to different parts. Some bits are going to be made from wood, some bits maybe are going to be made from some sheet aluminium and some bits could be made from some coloured plastic, some acrylic. So when you're doing this and you're outlining the shapes, think what bit would sit in front of the other, what bit would sit behind.
in this part here, I'm trying to think about how different pieces of material would connect with each other. And I know that they can't connect just by one little small corner. So I'm actually avoiding uh, some of these lines and just going around them to make them all join together in one piece. So really think about how you're doing this, how you're outlining it, um, and how you're making different really interesting shapes stand out from each other. So now that I've outlined all the different parts to the different designs, what I'm going to do is start selecting where the clock face is going to be and where the hands of the clock is going to be positioned. So look at each uh, design in turn and find a space that you think the clock might um, be good to be placed and draw it in. You might want to outline it with your thin pen on some of them or just with your sharpie pen on some other of your ideas. Now we're going to look at um, presenting it with a little bit of colour and the reason we're going to put some colour on is not just to make it maybe stand out from the page a bit more but is to communicate the different types of materials that we're going to use. Now when I'm doing this I've selected three coloured pens because I don't want to overload this with um, too many different colours. I just want to keep it nice and simple and each pen represents a different type of material. So I've selected some blue for the acrylic and that's going to be the plastic that I could use. I've selected some grey to represent the aluminium and I'm also going to use some brown to represent some wood. When I'm colouring here, I'm not being precious about it. I'm just trying to be quite quick. And you'll notice that when I'm colouring or rendering the grey colour, the aluminium, I'm purposefully leaving some white streaks in it to demonstrate maybe a little bit of reflection on the surface of the aluminium. With the blue, I've kind of gone round the edges a little bit to kind of um, just fill it in. But when I'm using the pen, I'm really trying to be as quick as possible just to get colour laid on the page. This is not about making your ideas look perfect. It's just to communicate the different materials that you're going to use. Here I'm going to start using the outline pen, the black pen, to start adding some shadows just to finish presenting this on the page and just to make some of the parts stick out from other parts. Just pick one of the edges and go around it with a thicker dark outline as if to create a small shadow next to it. And when you do this consistently throughout all your ideas then some pieces will really start standing out from others. As we come to the end of this task, I want you to um, reflect on what you've managed to achieve. Hopefully you've got some creative ideas that are all different from each other. Hopefully it was quite a quick process. It shouldn't have taken much longer than about 45 minutes to do. And hopefully you've got some things that you didn't think you were going to achieve at the start. The next stage will be for you to take the sparks of these ideas, parts of them or a whole shapes that you like and take them forward and develop it for the future. <laughs>